please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Captain's Log, Subdates 230418.3 I have to admit, this short-term outrage concerning anything boycottable tickles me, especially when the product often being boycotted for a brief moment is absolute crap. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the backlash concerning Dylan Mulvaney's association with a number of rather large well-known brands. The outrage is quite something, and if you didn't get it from the captain's log, I already have an opinion on boycotting. If you'd like a refresher course on what I spoke about last week, I will link the Dylan Mulvaney video from last week down below. I have done another one, I believe, concerning a link with Bud Light, both of which will be linked down below. I think the other one's on the Omegon 2 Electric Boogaloo channel. I, I can't say for certain. Courtesy of The Independent. Dylan Mulvaney addresses the anti-trans backlash of her Nike and Bud Light partnerships. The TikTok star opened up about being a member of the transgender community and some of the scrutiny she's faced during Tuesday's episode of iHeart Radio's Onward with Rosie O'Donnell podcast. Her comments came as online trolls have been criticizing Nike and Bud Light for choosing her to be one of their, I'm going to put that there on purpose, ambassador. Rosie O'Donnell. Okay, fair enough. Mulvaney talked to host Rosie O'Donnell about the ongoing attacks towards transgender people in the US and her own transition before sharing why she believes she's been hit with a lot of criticism. Quote, The reason that I think I'm so... I'm an easy target is because I'm so new to this. I think I'm going after a trans woman that's been doing this for like 20 years is a lot more difficult. I think maybe they think that there's some sort of chance with me, but what is their goal? There might be a point to that. There might be with some people who have been very critical. I can't refute it, can't debunk it. There is undoubtedly going to be some. But I'm going to say might because that leaves some wiggle room. I think the reason you're a target is less to do with you being trans and more how you tokenize, trivialize, and almost caricature the portrayal of what it is to be a woman or in your mind, girlhood. What that is to you apparently appears to be taken from some kind of cartoon TV show from the 90s. Continuing with the article, although she didn't mention anyone by name, Mulvaney said she doesn't let people's online comments get to her, but that the backlash is a sign that things need to change. Quote, I'm not worried about the people talking about me on their podcasts. I'm worried about their listeners. And I also think that it's just a heavy time, and it's time to step up for sure. During that same podcast, Rosie O'Donnell criticized Kid Rock, because Kid Rock had decided that he did not want to be associated with Bud Light anymore, and so posted a video on Twitter of himself shooting a rifle at a case of the brand's beers. With Rosie being quoted as saying, beer companies have been supportive of the LGBTQIA community for decades. This is not the first time. Who do you think sponsors Pride? Gay people, trans people, we need beer too, man. Put down your gun, Kid Rock. It's in bad taste. Interestingly, Nike have spoken about, about creating a positive community, saying in a pinned comment, You are an essential component to the success of our community. We welcome comments that contribute to a positive and constructive discussion. Be kind, be inclusive, encourage each other. Hate, speech, bullying, or other behaviours that are not in the spirit of a diverse and inclusive community will be deleted. Things like that only stoke fire within the hearts of all keyboard warriors. How do you not know how to internet? It's current year after all. One would have thought by now you would know how to internet. Don't put bait out like this as well, because you mention comments that contribute to, and then you say positive and constructive. Much of it can be considered constructive, but you find a way to make it hate speech because that is nebulous. Bullying, it is nebulous. Other behaviours is also vague. I thought I'd just say the other word since it made more sense. A little diversity and inclusivity with my language. How do you like that? It's funny, really, because I've always encouraged absolutist freedom of speech. People can say whatever they want, really. But I'm aware that for the most part, we have to play the game. Dylan Mulvaney is playing a very dangerous game right now because that game comes across as disingenuous. I don't agree with the idea of taking a bunch of cans and shooting them as a form of protest. I really don't. But I don't for a different reason. You see, Bud Light, to me, isn't a beer. And I'm going to play a video from somebody off YouTube that adequately conveyed my message 
concerning Bud Light. All right, so there's a lot of people talking about the new trans spokesperson for Bud Light beer, Dylan Mulvaney. Apparently to celebrate Dylan's 365th day as a woman, they've put Dylan's face on the can. Yeah, you know Dylan, the woman? Yeah. Personally, I think it'd be more appropriate to put David's face on some Pennzoil transmission fluid. Get it? Anyway, if you're one of the people boycotting Bud Light for partnering with Dylan, I'd like to congratulate you on joining the rest of the world who's been boycotting Bud Light ever since we discovered it's literally the most disgusting tasting beer known to man. But seriously, if you're one of the folks who's mad that the official spokesperson for Bud Light is now a trans person, take a look in the mirror. You're drinking light beer. You're halfway there yourself. So moving away from that, we're going to go to Anheuser Busch. Apparently, they are the company that produce Bud Shite. They had eventually broken their silence after the whole controversy concerning Dylan Mulvaney's inclusion. CEO Brendan Whitworth made a statement on Friday saying, As the CEO of a company founded in America's heartland more than 165 years ago, and you still can't get a good beer recipe right, I am responsible for ensuring every consumer feels proud of the beer we brew. We're honored to be part of the fabric of this country. Anheuser Busch employs more than 18,000 people and our independent distributors employ an additional 47,000 valued colleagues. We have thousands of partners, millions of fans, and a proud history supporting our communities, military, first responders, sports fans, and hardworking Americans everywhere. We never intended to be part of a discussion that divides people. We are in the business of bringing people together over a beer. Well, I mean, you do anyway, because you're beer shit. Seriously, it's, it's not even beer. It's so bad. It's light. But it's light, something that's already shite. Therefore, it is not beer, is it now? My time serving this country taught me the importance of accountability and the values upon which America was founded. Ah, America. Freedom, hard work, and respect for one another. That doesn't sound very American, the respect part. Not from what I've seen of late. As CEO of Anheuser-Busch, I am focused on building and protecting our remarkable history and heritage. Gatekeeping a crap recipe. Cool. I care deeply about this country, yet you can't produce a good beer enough to respect them that much. This company, our brands, and our partners. I spend much of my time traveling across America, apologizing no doubt, listening to and learning from our customers. Clearly you're not learning. Your beer's still shite. Distributors and others. Moving forward, I will continue to work tirelessly to bring great beers to consumers across our nation. Well, that's a lie, isn't it? Why lie to your audience like this? I have an ISO cube with your name on it, Mr. Whitworth. In the case of Mr. Whitworth, he was accused also, well, there were reports of it anyway, but senior executives were kept in the dark about the rollout of Dylan Mulvaney's sponsorship things. Yeah, and the additional accusation is that the only reason this even happened, this apology, yeah, is because stocks, uh, well, the valued market value plummeted from $132 billion, which is what the company is worth, down by $5 billion since the campaign launched on April the 1st. This isn't even a joke, by the way. There are some places I have heard of. One of my server mods told me about this quite well from where they are in the world, in America, in the South. People are actually refusing to buy Bud Light because of this. But didn't last long. You see, boycotting, I don't really see it as a long-term beneficial tactic. And I say that because no matter how many times people do it, it always ends the same way. People go crawling back. They move on, they forget, they stop caring. Because creatures of habit and, of course, a monopoly in some regions. And what I mean by that is, Bud Light is very easy to get in many areas of the country. Right. Well, in that same respect, in the UK it would be Carlsberg, Carling, Heineken. I always thought Grolsch was better, but you know what? I don't see that these days here, but they're the easiest ones to get. So if they started doing things that were controversial, eventually people will go back to them. Why? Because they're easy to get. They're affordable. Same with Bud Light. I can't believe this much fuss has been made about Bud Light. It's 3.5%. Fam, 3.5. That's a table beer. That's, that's not even a beer. What's going on? Pussies. When we Brits call you guys lightweights, this does not help you, okay? This does not. Get on the whiskey and move on with your lives. I'll also add an additional. If Dylan Mulvaney got a sponsorship deal with a whiskey that I'm quite fond of, I would more than likely still buy it just to see what kind of swerve they've inserted to make it all Dylan Mulvaney-ish. Yeah, no doubt the bottle will have a uh, bulge. Yeah, it'll have a very ostentatious over-the-top smile. Yeah, and uh, will probably be really fruity for no reason other than to be really fruity. 
So a not cask strength, because like, fuck, can anyone handle that from America? Yeah. 40% red wine cask finish. Oh, no, 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 Dylan's white. White wine cask. Very dry, yes. Someone who's been very vocal in their criticisms of Dylan Mulvaney would include the likes of Ollie London, who tweeted, It has been 12 days since Bud Light and Dylan Mulvaney announced their partnership. The beer brand's parent company, Anheuser-Busch, has lost $3 billion in value, plummeting from the value of $132 billion to $129 billion. Bud Light sales have dropped 30%. That is quite a drop in sales. Ollie did also point out, though, that draft beer sales are down 50% in many retailers and bars. Now, underneath, someone had replied to Ollie with, Bud Light will make more than that. If you know marketing, you know I'm right. This was their best marketing campaign ever. To make an omelette, one should break some eggs. Reply, I know marketing. Was a CMO for 13 years. Bud Light torched decades of goodwill with their most loyal and regular customers on a bet that new customers acquired will make up for it a risky strategy when they had many alternative options. It should be noted for the sake of intellectual credibility that the numbers that Ollie London was citing came from a Fox Business report. That report, while claiming that Bud Light had suffered a bloodbath, was quoted specific to Case and Bucks, a restaurant and sports bar in Barnhart, Missouri. While we've still got Fox on the brain, Harry Schumacher, who is a Beer Business Daily editor, told Fox News Digital, this is probably the biggest controversy we've seen in a long time. It could be a tempest in a teapot. It could be temporary, but it's enough that distributors have rung the bell. And that's not a lie. Consider it insider trading knowledge. Okay. Harry Schumacher continued by saying, There was a little bit of worry, especially in the South and the Midwest, and especially in rural areas, where retailers were reporting the, you know, their customers weren't happy with Bud Light, and some retailers themselves weren't happy with Bud Light. As the week went on, you know, there were customers within the industry of why Anheuser-Busch would wade into the culture wars with their largest brand. The simple answer is that I don't think they intended to. For his publication, he wrote something about the distributors in rural areas of America being spooked, saying those distributors also tend to be smaller and more reliant on the Anheuser-Busch brands to pay their bills. And so yeah, there is some concern about it. The controversy extended through the holiday weekend, which is a problem for Anheuser-Busch. You do have to pivot to the values of a younger generation, and those values don't always align, as we're seeing here with older folks. One of the voices who spoke up against the boycotting is Donald Trump Jr., the eldest son of the former President of the United States. During an episode of his Triggered podcast, he said, I'm not for destroying an American, an iconic company, for something like this. The company itself doesn't participate in the same leftist nonsense as the other big conglomerates further arguing that Anheuser-Busch had a conservative lean in their political donations. According to Open Secrets, Anheuser-Busch and individuals affiliated with the company donated over half a million dollars to the National Republican Senatorial Committee in the 2022 election cycle. Individuals with ties to the company also gave $464,505 to the National Republican Congressional Committee for the same cycle, continuing by saying, frankly, they don't participate in the same woke garbage that other people in the beer industry actually do, who are significantly worse offenders when I looked into it. But if they do it again, it's on them, then screw them. Now, I didn't mention it earlier, but there has been some criticism concerning the statement put out by Anheuser Bush. I read from it earlier, here is the image of it. Some have tweeted, pathetic statement from Anheuser Bush CEO. To be clear, they sent a trans influencer personalized cans of Bud Light. That's not dividing people. Caving to these hateful bigots is what divides our country. Shame on you, Brendan Whitworth. Epic leadership fail. Ben Collins tweeted, Bud Light caves to a mob that was shooting at and running over its product for giving one minute sponsored Instagram posts to a trans person. Reply, yeah, I'm sure the people literally shooting at Bud Light cans and driving over cases in their trucks will be satisfied with this and start acting reasonably. Great job. This issue is going to divide for a long time. It's going to continue for as long as many people continue to enable certain tokenizing, certain caricature portrayals. But also there's a point here. While Bud Light might be seen donating and their employees might be donating more to conservatives, Bud Light sent personalized cans to someone. Some have claimed they don't really align themselves politically, but that can with Dylan's face on was a huge slap in the face to that theory. In fact, it outright debunked it. So I can't wait to see how Anheuser-Busch handle things in the future.